Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say this to people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Because I persecuted the church of God. 
But by grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the, into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. 
For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that had, they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So nice to see you here, Scouts. It's a pleasure for me to be speaking to you and all of you. <laughs> Our readings today are about a call, God's call, and God calling self-admittedly unlikely people, imperfect people. In our first reading, God's call was to Isaiah, probably the greatest prophet of Israel. Then we heard from Paul in his letter to the Corinthians. Now that was not, uh, uh, was not the scripture of his call, but what he did do is he said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Now, Paul's not known for his humility, um, and that statement is a statement of humility. And that is a re result of his call, knowing that God is with him and helping him in everything he did. Our gospel is the story of Jesus calling his first disciple, Simon Peter. He's also, he is Peter, Peter who denied Christ three times, uh, the same person who is called Cephas in the letter to the Corinthians. Jesus called Peter Cephas, which means rock in Aramaic. So when you hear these words, it's all that same person. And all that he was doing was doing what he ordinarily does on a day. He was cleaning his equipment from his uh, occupation as a fisherman. He was cleaning the nets, and Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up, and this big, big crowd is with him. I think that Jesus probably was uncomfortable and felt that he might be crushed by the crowd. I know I'm uncomfortable in big crowds. Um, and the reason why there's such a big crowd is that the word was out. The land of Capernaum is a small place, and right on the northwestern edge of the Sea of Galilee, which only Luke calls Lake Gennesaret, uh, is where Jesus met with Simon Peter on this, on this occasion. But what had happened not too much time earlier was that Jesus spoke at the synagogue in Capernaum. Jesus came to Simon Peter's house, saw that his mother was ill, and healed her. She had a fever. And with that, lots of people showed up, and he healed them. So now, we're at this point where the gospel starts. And lots and lots of people, so many of us need healing. And they were there. It was a gentle encounter that Jesus had with Simon Peter. Uh, almost an insignificant one on the surface. There was trust on both sides. Jesus trusted Simon Peter's abilities as a boatman, as a fisherman. And when he asked to step onto his boat, there were two there, but he chose Simon Peter's boat and asked him to please pull it out a bit and he would preach from the boat. Simon Peter had trust in Jesus because he's had this encounter before with him, so he wasn't an unknown person. And when Jesus asked Simon Peter to put the nets out when he fully knew that there weren't going to be any fish, this man was a fisherman, he knew, but he trusted Jesus' words and did it anyway. And then there was the miracle, the extraordinary happening Jesus then invited Peter, saying, and he invited, don't be afraid, 
from now on you will be catching people. Now I'm old enough to remember the translation, fishers of men. Uh, either of those don't work so well for me, and the trouble with being a seminarian is I know just about this much, and now I'm going to change what uh, theologians and Bible scholars have translated. <laughs> but, you know, a fish and squirmy, I am not squirmy when I'm, you know, called by God. I'm not caught and trapped when I'm called by God. So what did that look like? Well, Peter began to live a different life. He lived a life by example. It was a life to attract people to Jesus' word. And Simon Peter had a lot to learn, and he followed Jesus and learned to tell Jesus' story and spread the word of God, Jesus' gospel. Peter was transformed by his call. All of this leads to our call. And we are called many times throughout our lifetime, not necessarily as dramatic as Isaiah's or Paul's or Simon Peter's, but called just the same. Rowan Williams, a past Archbishop of Canterbury, has, has, says this, to say that we believe in Jesus is the equivalent of saying that we have confidence in Jesus above all things. In Jesus is where we belong the one to whom we belong. But what does Jesus want from us? We're asked to reflect and to discern. Our scouts could probably give us a hint of what Jesus wants from us. I'm thinking uh, some of it is to use our gifts and our talents for the glory of God in our work and in the lives we lead. To do what we're meant to do, which very likely is what we are already doing. We don't have to change so much to receive the call and, and do what Jesus is asking. Um, as a hospital chaplain, I knock on a door, I say, hello, my name is Kate, I'm the chaplain on call, and a patient one day said, I don't, I don't buy into religion. And I said, well, I'm not bringing in religion. <laughs> and I don't bring up God unless somebody asks, mentions God first. I'm there to listen and see where the conversation flows. And sometimes it doesn't really go anywhere, and that's fine. Um, but I don't do religion. Um, I think one of the things that Jesus wants from us is to see the world and each other and ourselves as God sees us, as God's beloved people. And when we think of each other as God's beloved people, we really have to go to the place where we say, and we're asked to love our enemies. And that's not easy at all. Um, I hope that our government, the both sides, learn to listen to one another and talk to one another. That would be good. Maybe not call each other enemy. That would even be better. But there are times when life is too complicated and too difficult, and we are at the limits of our love and our energy. To be asked to do one more thing is too much to ask. Enough already. No more calls. Turn off that cell phone. No messages. No buzzes. This, when the time comes like this, it's our time to call, to call upon God. We're asked to pause, to rest, to seek peace in prayer, and pray with gratitude. We're asked to take care of ourselves. You've been on airplanes. Have you listened to the flight attendants tell you about when the uh, oxygen masks come down and you're with a child, you put it on you first? There's a reason, what good are we if we're passed out to help our children? If we take care of ourselves, we can do what God is asking of us. We're called to reach out for help and stay connected in the community for strength. In Psalm 138 that we heard read so lovely uh, just a little bit ago, this is what we prayed. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. When I called, 
I called God. You answered me. You increased my strength within me. Speaking of strength, today is Scouting Sunday. Scouting, a strong foundational experience, a call to service. I was a Girl Scout. My husband was a Boy Scout. My mother was a Den mother. <laughs> and um, it was a wonderful thing for her. So I'm just wondering, because you were called to be Scouts, how did that happen? How did you decide to become a, a Scout? Would anyone tell me? Tell me. Uh, my mom signed me up. My mom signed me up. <laughs> You're still a scout. You kind of like it? A little bit. That's good. How else would you how else? How else were you called to be a scout? How did you get to become a scout? I saw the list. There are a lot of mothers and fathers involved in scouting. Maybe some of you have a mother who is a scout leader. Yes. Yes, thank you, Charlotte. That's right. So what do you do? Because my badges, I wore a sash. My mother sewed my uh, troop number on it, 2476. <laughs> and um, I wish I could find it. I was looking for it. Um, so tell me about your badges. What are these right here? Um, well, we, this is the bronze award. When, so when you're a junior, you do a bronze award. You can receive it. You get this. And when you're a cadet, when you're a cadet, you do silver, you do silver project, and if you can decide on the silver award, and then you do a gold project. And I noticed there are some badges on your backs. Tell me about them. Tell me one of them anyway. I'll do the tape. What is the intrepid one? And we ate them, <laughs> and, I, and 
I felt so guilty for the whole year, so the next year I bought two boxes and delivered them to this family. And they didn't know who I was, and they didn't know what to do with it. And I just gave it to them and ran out. And then I felt better. That's my big experience. Um, let's listen to the scouts when they rededicate themselves to their call. Let's listen and be inspired. And let us pray for the openness and the grace to keep listening and keep looking, whether or not we can comprehend or understand. And let's be open to the mystery. Okay. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, a 20th century philosopher and theologian, had this to say to us. Our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> our honor is a quality we possess because of our dignity as human beings and children of God. Our best means to give all that we have. It means to keep striving to do what we know is right, and in the oath it means we will try to be the good scouts by fulfilling our scout duties as expressed in the scout law. On my honor, I will do my best. Our duty to God and country means chiefly two things. Obedience and loyalty. The duties we owe to the house of God, to our country, to parents, to one another, and to ourselves, comes from the sun command of God. The scout law sums up all the qualities a scout should have, and without which he cannot be a good scout. To my duties to God in my country, and to obey the scout law. Our Lord told us that love of our neighbor was like the first law of love of God. The first children of God were known by the love they had for one another. Real human charity or love prompts us to want to help others at all times. Our scout training will give us skills and knowledge that will put us in a better position to do this. To help other people at all times. Scouting offers us many opportunities to grow strong physically. To be alert and ready requires us to give special care to those gifts of soul, intellect, and will that makes us unto God. Morally straight means we must try to know what is right and true, and to love what is good and choose it. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. The scout law. The person who is dishonest shall not live in my house. The person who is untruthful should not stand before my eye. A scout is trustworthy. And Ruth said, Do not beg me to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. A scout is loyal. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. A scout is humble. Can two walk together unless they agree? A scout is friendly. Honor your father and mother. A scout is courteous. Withhold not good from the person to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do it. A scout is kind. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. A scout is obedient. A glad heart is good medicine. A scout is cheerful. A precious treasure remains in a wise person's mouth, and a foolish person. A scout is a great Be strong and of good courage. A scout is a great Who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? The person who has clean hands and a pure heart. A scout is a great It has been told to you what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Only to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. For the rededication of the scouts.
scouts. Uh, please, everyone who has been a scout, stand also. I know we have lots of scouts in our community. And you guys can turn around, okay? Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by one spirit into one God and given varieties of gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose here today is to acknowledge in the name of God all of the scouts gathered here today to remind them of their high calling and responsibility, to pray that God will bless and direct their every action and to celebrate the witness of their service to others in their daily lives. Dear friends, you have all presented yourselves here today because you have been called to a special vocation of service to God, your community, and your country. Do you rededicate yourselves to a life of loving service to God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you desire to continue in your service to others and promise to remain faithful in service and prayer? We rededicate ourselves to the service of God, our community, and our country. Will all of the, you who witness these vows do all in your power to support, to support all these persons in their vocation? Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Yes, and we have our patches. So um, 